Hey guys, Zero here with a PlayStation 4 controller fix. So Sony made some head turns when they announced that they were making drivers for Windows for their PlayStation 4 controllers. And indeed you can plug them up, Windows 7 will recognize it, and say you have a gaming controller. And you might be able to use them. Well, sorta. Unfortunately, most games will not recognize the controller, and so you're just back to square one. So let's fix that today. So the good guys at PCSX2 made a way to make your computer think that your PlayStation 4 controller is indeed an actual Xbox 360 controller. That way all the buttons will be mapped, all the buttons will work, and most of the games will have that functionality already in them. So no messing about with extra DLLs, extra patches, extra anything. It just straight up works. So the link to the webpage is going to be in the description as the link directly to the things that you need to download. But this is what it looks like when it opens up. And you'll see over here it detected a controller. So what you want to do is scroll all the way down to this little box and look for 1.2.1. You want to save that somewhere that you can remember, somewhere easy to find. I already made that folder right there. And I already made this folder here to contain the zip folders. So once we put them in here, we're going to go and extract them, and then everything will work. What you also want to do is get this file right here, the test file. It's another zip, place it in the zip folder, same thing. That one will allow you to see what works on your controller and what doesn't. Now, let's go to that folder. Let's say that you've taken these two and extracted them all to this folder right here. It doesn't need to have that name, it's whatever. And you'll have this list of files. Now, all these guys are what you're going to need to make this run. The first thing you want to do is go into this folder and press the exe. Double click on that. It might take a couple of seconds and it'll come up with a installer. You will need to install all the things that the controller needs and pretty much it's done by just clicking install. Fancy that. It will go through the motions, it will take a little bit longer for yours, but at the end you'll see it says completed successfully. All you have to do now is close it, either exit or with a X at the top. Go back to the original folder where you have everything inside, and now we're going to go and take a look at the test. So the test will come up and will show you the Xbox controller. Notice how it says not connected. Sometimes it's connected, sometimes it's not. It depends on your setup, it depends on how it works, but basically you want to leave that open, open up the actual program, which is the server program, and you'll see that if everything works out fine, you'll have a controller there, it'll tell you the battery life, it'll tell you that it's ready to go. So will the test. And now you see I can move it around, move the sticks, press the buttons, everything on the PlayStation 4 controller just works. There's two extra buttons right here. One is Start Minimize. Start Minimize is just so that when you start this server application for the controller, it doesn't show you all the blah blah at the bottom where it says searching, connecting, yada yada. The more important one is Hide DS4 Controller. This is basically a compatibility option. A lot of games have some problem with this just not being clicked. Dark Souls 2 is one of those games. If it's not clicked, it will not take the inputs from the controller. It's just something that you need to try, it's something that you need to know. So most of the times it's just fine to leave it as hide DS4 controller and go about your business and just everything will be fine. Another important thing about the server program is that when you minimize it, it leaves the tray. It will be found at the far right under the little arrow that says show hidden icons and it will be a little icon there that says DS4 or X input tool. This sometimes leads you to reopen the program and it will pop up saying the controller is not found. If this happens before panicking, before saying hey what the hell happened, go and look if that little tray icon is there. This is actually fairly common, I've done it myself a couple of times and I was like I have no idea what's wrong, reboot the computer and when you reboot it's fine. The reason is the controller is being kept by the first instance of that program, second instance does not see it, of course, because it's captured by the first. So just be careful about that. So this is a little bit of in-game footage. I'm moving the camera around with the mouse, and you can still see it's a little bit jittery. It's an improvement from the PC port of Dark Souls 1, but it's still not buttery smooth. That's why we use the controller, if we can, of course. 
because it makes it a little bit smoother. It makes it a little bit easier, especially to run in one direction and look behind you or look around. It's a little bit easier with uh, the controller. Thank you for checking out this video. I hope you get your PlayStation 4 controller working with Dark Souls 2 and other games. See you next time.